These people will fight amongst themselves, they'll fight the police, they'll fight anybody, but they will always believe in their country. But whatever the reasons immediately behind these latest disturbances, the police for their part maintain that a petrol bomb factory was established there some time ago. I think a lot of these race, what I consider race problems, are, are stirred up to a large extent by the far left and uh, the loony left. Um, it must be easier to manipulate people when they're on drugs. There's a lot of people in these, uh, all these areas seem to be sort of uh, full of drug users. I was horrified at the Labour conference that not one delegate said anything um, good about the police. They all damned the police. Criminals had used dismay and grief to burn, stone and then to kill. The ferocity of the attack was senseless beyond belief, he added. During the rioting, the Commissioner had deployed members of the Tactical Firearms Unit. I don't ever think it's a bad thing to have a strong personality leading a country. I think she has great feeling for the population of the country. And I think particularly perhaps as a woman, cares more for the people um, in the same way perhaps as the, as the Queen cares for the people. The Commissioner is convinced they can cope through traditional policing methods rather than by introducing CS gas and water cannon, despite the fact that they believe that political activists are determined to find another opportunity to strike again elsewhere. Guy Cheney, a commodity broker, claims to make in a good year half a million pounds with his partner, John Buckland. The, the October goes off the ball fairly soon, doesn't it? This afternoon in their city office, the hope is to sweeten the income by yeah. dealing in sugar. Well, David, we don't think so. Very well, you? Lovely holiday, yeah. John left you some at 60 and some at 3 double didn't he? Uh, I'll can, uh, cancel it, put it in at 60. OK. The oxen are doing Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, uh, New York slipping. Thank you very much. Much obliged, Peter. Yeah. Cheers. We're out on that bike, in fact. Well, it really doesn't matter anymore, does it? Uh, we have no intention of delivering well, sugar. It's Peter there. We are merely trading yeah. a contract month which is an obligation to deliver sugar at a given price on a given, uh, over a given period. We have no intention of Peter, actually ever making that delivery. Uh, buy five at 51.60. What are you cancelling? The buying. Buying at 60? Yeah. What are you putting back in at? Not going to run it. We're selling something we haven't got in anticipation of buying it back cheaper. Yeah. Thanks. And Thanks. Uh, right now it looks like we're going to buy it back cheaper. This is going to go down. It's very choppy. It's choppy as hell. OK, see, it's running. Got no buying in at all? No. Right. Here we go. Look at it. Ee hee. They're cracking it. It's Playing around. It's twitchy. Twitchy. It looks like someone's buying. Someone's <clears> in there buying. Should be lower. Someone's buying. Yeah, it, on my chart, it looks like a piece of shit. I mean, I don't know. No. It looks, uh... Yes. John. Good to cancel. Do you want me to take out anything on the bounce? Still yeah. on the bounce? I'll look at it. Yeah. Sorry? OK, cheers. Buy five. Because I'm sure where? Two? You could drop like a stone, JB. Yeah, I'd hang far five. on it. Look, it's 51, 20 at 20 offered. I'd, ca I'd take that out. I really wouldn't. No, I'm going to... It's up to you, no, it's up to you. No, I'm going to cover it. Uh, buy five at one, Peter. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, I'd run some. OK, buy four, then. Yeah, four at one. Thanks a lot. You think so? Yeah. Yes. Mm. I think I'm not going to come fishing, Guy. Quite honestly. Because we're earning money, and... Uh, Three cent drops and knock it. You watch now, it. Now, I'm on a roll, I'm going to stay. No way, is there. Could end in about ten minutes. I know, but I'm going to stay. We can go fishing again. You go, I'll stay. Two days later, the market broke. John, no longer hot, but having made a few thousands profit, shut up shop and went fishing with Henry, Robert and Guy. Oh, it's something on the end, yeah? having a crack at it. Uh, definitely a bite on it, isn't it? 100%. You doing something, Guy? Yeah, definitely a bite on it. Definitely a bite. I'm just leaving it for a second. Just a minute. Bear with me a minute. That's not... I think I can give it a strike. Ah, oh, give it a strike if you think there's something there. 
Strike and wine, strike and wine. It's big, aren't they, around here, Bill? Do you want another knife? Yeah, I'll just stick it in the other way then. Right. Have the head off, I don't you think? You can just split his spine there and he'll not do much damage. Don't put your fingers in his mouth still. Though. That's fine. That's fine. You probably have to your line now. Is it that long way down? Nah, it's well down he's got, I think. No, it's just here. Here it is. Yeah. I'll get my pliers. A pair of pliers up there then. Yeah. <sighs> Open up, dental treatment. <laughs> Dentist. <laughs> the oldest of the friends, John Buckland, claims his main interest is to make money. Robert Hutchinson, the only bachelor, supports an expensive lifestyle by private means and no job. Henry Carew, however, has unearned income and a high-powered job in the drinks trade. While Guy Cheney, tiring of life in the city, has secret hopes of becoming a best-selling author. Now we go back again. What do you got in there? Yeah. Your license. Oh, do you want a cigarette? The number of people out of work has risen to the highest level ever recorded. The total unemployed and claiming benefit last month was 3,346,198. That's a rise of almost 106,000 on the August figure. Oh my Children's birthday party, seventh birthday party. It's also Christmas. Getting for me, it's Christmas. And, uh, and the company are playing around in the stock market, so, so things are quite busy. And I'm trying to get home for Rebecca's party, get settled down, in the hope that I can then actually attend it. Away from your faces and. Rebecca's going to go away to school. Um, I think the normal age for girls to go away, if they do go away, is about 12. So when she reaches that age, I'll send her away to, to a boarding school to learn a little discipline. Uh, my wife agrees with the principle of sending Rebecca away, uh, but I think it's for the good of the child and not just for the good of the parents. And Benjamin, what age will you send him? Benjamin, I'll send away to school um, the, the normal age for a, pub, for a, for a boy to uh, prep school, which is appallingly young, it's seven or eight years old. I was sent away at that age. I don't think it did me any harm. Uh, in fact, I think it did me a lot of good. Um, it teaches you to learn to live with other, other boys, and then as you grow older, other men and, and other people, and learn some discipline. When, when your teacher says, jump, you jump. Is there going to be the money around in the next few years for people to have private education? Um, we, I believe, as a country, are generating more wealth, more income, more money. Um, I think people who have the opportunity to work um, are able to earn, by working harder, more and more money and, and, and really increase their real standard of living. And for those people with jobs, I think, yes, there will be the money around. Now, that's a very simple, pat answer. It's not as simple as that. I'm, I'm not a politician, nor am I a head of industry yet. I hope to be one day. <laughs> the unemployed must, in many people's eyes, represent a threat to security, a threat to stability, a threat to law and order. But perhaps we should go and ask the unemployed what it is they would like to do, given a fact of life, that currently there are not jobs available. It was a party, it wasn't a dinner party, it was just a, a drinks party. A right weirdo, weirdo mob. I think it's quite fun actually. My brother's pop. <laughs> and she's very, very kinky. 
I yeah. lost a cufflink once there. Eh? I'm telling you. <laughs> Which part of it? Uh, I'm not telling you. I'm not bloody sure that's where I lost it. <laughs> oh. I was looking for my umbrella at the time. <laughs> She's not ugly, really. She's about four foot eight tall. She weighs about 16 stone. She's into chains and whipping and things like that. And what a bloody collection. <laughs> right, you had the lot in there, the Marquis de Sard's apprentices. You had, they were all there. <laughs> they turn up, some of the lot, they turn up, you know, and they, all these men that pierce their nipples and all this sort of stuff, you know, put tie pins through their tits. <laughs> you didn't want to go in the bedroom, you didn't know what the kit was there, you know, whip slashes. <laughs> like, a, like a peculiar leather factory. It's been a day of widespread violence in the coloured townships around Cape Town in South Africa. School children have been involved in street clashes with police following last night's killing of at least three youngsters in Athlone Township. They died when police, concealed in containers on the back of a truck, suddenly jumped out and opened fire during disturbances. Robert, how many clubs are you a member of? Uh, I'm a member of three main clubs. The RAC, which is very good for sports facilities, like squash, sauna, and of course it's fantastic swimming pool. Uh, I remember Brooks's, it's very good for backgammon. And the Turf Club, which has an excellent snooker table. And also fantastic facilities during race meetings like Goodwood, uh, Royal Ascot Weed, and also very important at Cheltenham. Uh, I also use a couple of nightclubs, Annabelle's and Raffles. And my mum's got enough money to go off to the casino, like Aspinall's or the Ritz. One of the main reasons for a club was to get away from the women. Um, unfortunately, most clubs have opened their doors to, to women, not all the time, and hopefully they can push them into an annex. Are we ready to begin? Uh, most clubs have a very strong vetting committee. I think some people might have slipped through, but on the whole, and not many outsiders have got in. If I saw Greenpeace going and lobbying in Irkutsk, then I'd say, fair enough, OK, you're right. More people get killed in Zimbabwe, I should, I should imagine, every six months than have done in the last ten years in South Africa. Shop picker. Green, Greenpeace and everybody else didn't get bonkers about that. But it seems to me that it's all right for blacks to kill blacks. That's perfectly OK. They can just kill as many as they want. And nobody's going to say a word about it. And they can kill whites as well. That's also OK. But if a few policemen break up a riot and people get killed, which is not a good idea, then that's it. We condemn South Africa. I think it's a ludicrous situation. There's some crass hypocrites.